and partition. Events leading to the independence and partition. The British government adopted the policy of repression to crush anti-British movement against the repressive Rowlatt Act of 1919, which empowered the government to arrest and imprison a person without any trial. Hartals were held in some places which led to violence. Two popular nationalist leaders had been arrested in Punjab. To protest against the arrest of their leaders, a public meeting was held on 13th April 1919. General Dyer, the military commander of Amritsar, had banned all public meetings. Jallianwala Bagh Tragedy General Dyer surrounded the Bagh with his troops, blocked the only exit and ordered the troops to open fire on the unarmed and peaceful gathering in the Bagh. The shooting continued till there was no ammunition left. Nearly 400 people were killed and over 1,000 were injured. Many jumped into the well in the bark to escape the bullets as there was no way out. Martial law was proclaimed in Punjab. During this period, people were humiliated and tortured. The inhuman treatment of the Indians shocked the entire nation. The Non-Cooperation Movement 1920 after the Jallianwala Bagh massacre, Gandhiji lost all faith in the goodness of the British government and declared that it would be a sin to cooperate with the government. The non-cooperation movement was launched by Gandhiji in 1920. The ultimate goal was to attain Swaraj by peaceful and legitimate means. The program of non-cooperation and the methods of resistance were as follows. Boycott of foreign goods. Boycott of government institutions, schools, colleges, law courts and legislatures. Boycott of elections and government functions. Renunciation of titles and honours awarded by the British. Constructive programmes like Swadeshi and Hindu-Muslim unity also became a part of the movement. Gandhiji stressed the importance of self-reliance and self-sufficiency. He popularized Khadi among the people, including the upper classes. The Charkha became the symbol of Swadeshi. National education was promoted. In 1922, a procession of peasants were fired upon by the police at Chori Chora. People reacted violently and burnt down the police station. Gandhiji called off the movement. Lahore Session of the Congress 1929 In December 1929, the Congress met in Lahore under the leadership of Jawaharlal Nehru. The Congress passed a resolution declaring Purna Swaraj or complete independence as its goal and 26 January 1930 was fixed as the Independence Day. They also resolved to launch a civil disobedience movement under the leadership of Gandhiji. On 26 January 1930, Independence Day was celebrated all over the country. The newly adopted Indian tricolour was unfurled and people solemnly took the Pledge of Freedom. This continued every year till India finally became free in 1947. The Civil Disobedience Movement 1930-34 The Civil Disobedience Movement launched in 1930 was a form of non-cooperation. Its objective was to defy the government and pressurize it to give in to their demands. The movement was launched by Gandhiji in March 1930 with the Salt Satyagraha. He decided to start with the breaking of the unjust salt law because it affected everybody in the country. Indians had to pay salt tax and could not manufacture it as it was a government monopoly. The Salt Satyagraha started with the Dandi March. Gandhiji set out from Sabarmati Ashram with 78 followers on a 385-kilometer journey to the coastal village of Dandi. Thousands joined him on the way. On reaching Dandi, he picked up some salt from the beach. This act symbolized the defiance of the salt law. The civil disobedience movement spread rapidly. It included violation of laws, refusal to pay taxes, boycott of foreign goods, hartals, demonstrations and picketing of shop selling foreign goods. Women participated in large numbers in the movement. 
Sarojini Naidu was one of the leaders of the movement. The government repressed the movement with force and brutality. Gandhi ji, Nehru and all the other important leaders were arrested. The political activity in India became increasingly intense after 1935. The Quit India Movement On 8th August 1942, Gandhi ji declared that they would free India or die in the attempt. He gave the do or die mantra. The Congress passed the Quit India Resolution. On 9th August, important nationalist leaders were arrested. The Congress was banned. The news of these arrests, even before the movement began, shocked the nation. Leaderless and without any guidelines, the movement turned violent in parts. The government came down heavily on the people and crushed the movement in a short time. The upsurge of 1942 was the last great mass challenge to British authority. It demonstrated how much the masses were willing to suffer to gain freedom. It was clear that the days of the British government in India were numbered. Nationalist activity, however, surfaced outside India's borders under the leadership of Subhash Chandra Bose, who believed that the British would have to be driven out by the use of armed force. The Indian National Army Subhash Chandra Bose resigned from the Congress in 1939. He formed a new party called the Forward Bloc. He wanted to join hands with Britain's enemies. He was arrested but he escaped to Japan. He took on the leadership of the Indian National Movement in East Asia and became the Supreme Commander of the Indian National Army INA. The INA crossed the Indo-Burma border with the Japanese army and liberated Imphal and Kohima. However, Japan was defeated in World War II and it is generally believed that Subhash Chandra Bose was killed in a plane crash on the way to Tokyo but is still celebrated in India for his heroism. In February 1947, the British government declared that power would be transferred to the Indians by June 1948. Lord Mountbatten, the British Viceroy, prepared a plan for transfer of power. Indian Independence and Partition of India Lord Mountbatten announced that British India would be divided into two independent nations, India and Pakistan. The Northwest Frontier Province, Sindh, Baluchistan, West Punjab and East Bengal separated from the rest of India to form a new country called Pakistan. British rule in India finally came to an end on 15th August 1947. The Indians celebrated their independence but it was marred by communal violence during the partition. Millions of people had to migrate, Muslims from India to Pakistan and Hindus from Pakistan. On 30th January 1948, Gandhiji was assassinated. The Constitution of India was enacted and adopted on 26 November 1949. It was introduced on 26 January 1950. On that day, the Indian Dominion was transformed into